Raymond Mungo here, who co-founded the Liberation News Service, and who was in his great stint and this uh, alliance with CBS. Okay, I'm glad to do that. I'm trying to figure out how to work this, this one, right? Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, hi, thanks very much, Ron, for that introduction. Thank you for inviting me to this panel. It's really a pleasure to be here. I'm going to be brief, speak for only a few minutes. Um, I was one of the founders of Liberation News Service in 1967, which predated the video freaks by a couple of years. And while the underground press may not have actually created the video freaks, they, they were sort of a precursor, and I just want to put this into a little bit of context. Um, Liberation News Service, very much like the video free spirit, emerged out of uh, straight media, the colleges and things like that. So we started Liberation with lots of acid and you know, lived in a big house in Washington because they weren't telling us the truth about what was going on in Vietnam. Yes, I'm 67 years old, but I'm history, I'm really history. Uh, this is the, some of the Liberation News Service crew. That's Marshall Bloom and the crew at our farm. You, you saw the video freaks moving to Janesville, New York. This was the LNS farm in Montague, Massachusetts. That's our other farm. That's me in the front row. And uh, that was called Total Loss Farm because we went there to lose yourself. <laughs> we, uh, we were uh, part of a schism in, in LNS. After a couple of years, LNS went into one of these violent schisms where one group stayed in New York and the other group took off for the farm. That's our printer, and that's our printing, our chief photographer, a young kid who was 15 years old, his name was Stevie Skolnick, showed up at our door one day. This is both the, uh, both the freaks who went to the country and the ones who stayed in the city at the time when we were all together. Uh, and the two guys in suits were just walking by at the time. <laughs> uh, this is Marshall and I in front of the church in Washington, D.C. that was across the street from our house, and the, the woman involved is Bala Bala who later got together with Eldridge Cleaver and then disappeared. I don't know where she is. No one's ever seen her again. But she was great. And that's Marshall Bloom, my partner. He uh, looked like some kind of a yeti or something. He was really long hair and long beard. He was just really a, a wild man. And the East Village other was a wild paper. They just get poetry competitions for the side. You know, it, it, we didn't know who was coming or going. We, we didn't even know. And uh, my compatriot, Alan Young, uh, who was originally with the Christian Science Monitor and the Washington Post, a couple of people from Berkeley. This is the Berkeley Bar, was the one that uh, changed the world over there in the Bay Area of San Francisco. And the, uh, this is the, the, the great speckled bird in Atlanta, Thorne Dreyer, uh, the editor of the rag with his friend Victoria Smith. I think I'm going to appear before this group as a as a revolutionary, <laughs> which is to say I'm going to revolt against most of what I've heard here so far today. Um, down with, and and David's opening remarks was that there uh, there is no television and radio anymore. There are only media. I I haven't accepted that. Um, and maybe I should accept it. When the Paley uh, organization began as the Museum of Television and Radio, then uh, I'm sorry. It ever produced. As a matter of fact, I would go on to say for people who think the Black Panther Party is wrapped up in uh, complete metaphysical bullshit about some of these other people like Milo, we respect Milo. But I say that uh, Chairman Bobby, Huey P. Newton, and the Chief of Staff David Heed also are the most profound Marxists in the, in the world living today. And they're writing some of the most profound Marxist stuff in Florida that's been covered. Um, to be responsive to your question, um, I don't know whether I could put a name on it. Don was very eloquent. And I, I was thinking about, I thought about Don a long time over these years. And one of the things that I want to tell you is that, you know, I was a, when this happened, I was a hippie. I don't know, living in my Volkswagen bus. And um, a big chance, because he had something to lose. I always respected him for it, because that took character. And Don has character. I didn't call suits than they had on him. But the, big, the, the three really biggest people at CBS television, 
it won't have anything to see um, important in not only in our lives, but I think it is a moment, a seminal moment in in video or television history. I don't know how it's going to be interpreted. Um, I've followed the revolution in a different way, a much more professional way, a much more conventional way. But when you say your work is done, I disagree. I think your work is only beginning. The real. No, I have not seen those emails. I'll look and see. Yeah. I think they probably just always say that anyway. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm also